Um, this is the, uh, the the final video that I'm going to do uh, in a series on uh, on a whole PBR conversion um, and creating textures for use in PBR. Um, in the original Twitch stream that I did, I kind of showed how to do vegetation. Uh, however, for this one, I'm actually going to show what, what I was going to do uh, um, uh, in a series on uh, a, a, a whole bonus. PBR conversion. Um, a bonus material, uh, and that is kind of this worn plastic. The reason, the reason why I'm kind of skipping over the vegetation one is it's very similar to vegetation stuff in the past. Really the biggest difference being understanding how the diffuse, the spec, and the gloss map work, which uh, if you watch any of the other three videos that I've already done, it should be pretty self-explanatory about how to do that so um, so the reason why I'm going to pick this plastic one is it's, it's really kind of a unique in-betweener if you will not quite metal not quite completely matte so uh, let's go ahead and uh, break down how to do this entire process so again we're going to uh, start from scratch here I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of my glossiness and my effect because I just want to focus on my use colors right now. So again, in the in the previous videos, I, I referenced back to this uh, this cheat sheet that I've got, which uh, I have available. Um, I'll probably I'll probably post it again somewhere, um, but you can find these on the internet too, just by searching for PBR cheat sheets. And uh, so I'm going to I'm going to use this for my base plastic, which we can see there's no specific plastic value here in our diffuse. However, um, I know it's going to probably be somewhere in between, somewhere close to the the rock values, maybe slightly less. So for starters, um, I'll show you how we can we can get around that. Uh, so I'm going to completely ignore. The, uh, the cheat sheet, which I know sounds completely counterintuitive to what I said, um, but I'll show you why I'm choosing to do that. Okay, so this is it. This is the only texture that I'm working from to, uh, to achieve the results that I did. Nothing more, no sculpts, uh, no high-res meshes, nothing. That's, I'm just working from this, uh, this photo source. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and group this. I'm going to my diffuse. To go ahead and duplicate this, which was Control J, or you can just drag it to layer. Label this spec. Blue. So another difference. Okay, so I'm just going to save this texture straight out, just as is. And two. Save it as a diffuse map. Diffuse look quality fine. Go back into CryEngine. I will apply plastic. Okay. Now the reason why I said that I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to worry about using uh, a reference chart to get this perfect, is uh, for this reason because I, I don't have a value in that sheet, so it, it's going to be guesswork anyways. So the trick here is I go ahead and I'm just I'm loading my diffuse map as is. I'm going to select my diffuse color, which 255, 255, 255 is where we want to be. That's that's our end goal. Um, because the, the darker we get, the more information we lose, and it kind of becomes uh, less, uh, the, the coloration, the details start to go away. So the trick here is that I'm going to get, I'm going to reduce this value over here to something that gets close to what the surface should look like. And again, this this is plastic, but imagine it's plastic without any gloss or any shine to it. So that looks about correct. I'm not going to keep the setting. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this luminance value, which is 140. I'm going to remember this number. Click Cancel. Go back to Photoshop. I'm going to create a new Levels Adjustment. This is where I'm going to plug in that number. I'm going to reduce the overall white down to 140. 
what I'm effectively doing is the changes that I saw in CryEngine when I reduce this down to 140, this should be exactly what I see when I make the same change in Photoshop. So the original with the adjustment down to 140. So let's go ahead and save this out. Quality. Take a look. Voila. So there you go. So that's that's kind of the backwards way to get your values correct without a lot of guesswork back and forth between Photoshop and Editor. So if uh, if you don't have a value, uh, something that's that's already kind of predefined as being uh, physically correct, then that is by far the easiest way to to get a hold of that number. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to use my cheat sheet again to look at my spec ranges, which plastic high. So uh, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at this right here, plastic high and plastic low. Plastic high is 61, plastic low is 53. I'm going to go a little bit more extreme on those, bump them up just a little bit more. So our fuse is set. I'm not going to worry about that now. I may have to come back and do a little bit more hue saturation, but uh, I'm going to focus on my, my spec map. So I'm going to create a new layer. Collection. And using these values, I'm going to go for my plastic high. I'm going to do about 65 instead of 61. So I'm going to go into here. And do our brightness, actually. Sorry. Nor not brightness. We are not touching brightness. Do not put it down. Spit it out. 65 is going to go in our RGB channels, not our brightness. So 65 red, 65 green, 65. So that's going to be that value that we saw there. So I'm going to fill that layer real fast. Which again, it's just alt backspace, or you can do edit, fill, foreground color. Go back to my marquee selection. Over. In this case, I'm going to change this now to low value, which in this case was 53. I'm going to reduce that to about 48. Again, sticking close to what's recommended, but not exact. Okay, so what, I, what I've done here is the swatch on the left is my high values. So the bright spots in my texture, I don't want any higher than this. And the dark spots, I don't really want any lower than this, um, with the exception of kind of these real worn areas. So if, uh, if I take a look, let me uh, just kind of show you easier to highlight. Okay, so the areas that I'm looking at are these areas where it looks like the paint is uh, shit, that's, uh, where, where the paint still looks pretty fresh. I'm going to use the high value to match that area. Places where my paint is probably a little bit more worn, some of these darker areas, I'm going to shoot more for this mid area. So a quick way to do that is I know I'm going to have to do a levels adjustment anyways. That's what's ultimately going to bring this down. But since my eye can't determine whether or not that color value is actually getting close to the gray, I'm going to add another hue saturation and completely desaturate. Now it's much easier for me to see where things are at. So bring it down, something that gets me within that range. Again, these, these are spec values too. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at, at this chart now, right here. That's what I'm uh, referring to for my values. Okay, so I think that looks good. Save this out. Uh, actually, one thing real quick, I, I completely forgot. So um, traditionally, this is how spec maps were made. This is, this is what we would do, uh, where the white values would be re more reflective and the dark values would be uh, more matte, less reflective. Um, not so much the case in PBR. In PBR, just a little crash course, the, the higher your spec value, the, the greater the Fresnel effect. You can really see it right here, kind of in the highlight, and I realize that's 
super small, but you can kind of see where the highlight's starting to bend around. Um, that's high spec and low, no light is wrapping around. So that's that's why using those values on a cheat sheet is so important with it. So um, this looks good. However, the big, big difference is we absolutely want coloration inside of our spec map because that is going to, uh, you can see here that it's, it, it looks kind of dusty, kind of worn, which is not what the texture should be. And uh, so having the coloration inside of our spec map will actually help boost those colors back. So I'm going to go ahead and add a hue saturation, and I'm actually going to bump that up a lot. Um, reason being for this, uh, on a scientific level, because, because plastic is semi-translucent, um, you'll get a lot of light that uh, actually penetrates through plastic and um, refracts inside and comes back out. So, so basically what it's doing is you're, you're kind of seeing itself illuminate. So uh, if, if this were like thicker plastic, almost like a, a real hard shelled plastic, I probably wouldn't do as much saturation, but because I, I want this to kind of look a little bit thinner, I'm gonna bump up my saturation a little bit more. So again, my levels, this adjustment is exactly using these values. Here are the reference sheet, that's exactly where it needs to be in the range, and I've increased the, so save this out. And we'll save it as a specular, specular high quality is fine. Honestly, I don't see much need for spec high quality unless you absolutely, absolutely need it. Spec low quality is probably going to be better on. So go back in and. Okay. So specs in because I've got my specular color down. I'm going to have to bring. So you can immediately see how, especially in the, in the yellow areas, you can really see what the map's doing. Pushing a lot more color out of the model. So that, that, that is uh, much, much better. So this is fine. Obviously, if I increase my gloss, uh, it's, it's all right. It's decent. Uh, you, you might be able to get away with this if it was like a smaller prop that we don't have to load a map. But uh, for, for, for the purposes of this video, I'm, I'm going to show you how to, to really crank up uh, more details out of it. So uh, we're going to move on to the normal map. The best way to do this is I'm going to increase my gloss all the way up, take my spec all the way out in. Uh, so now all I'm seeing is just the loss value and the normal value. So Photoshop, did the same thing. Um, I'll actually walk through the process on this one since I did in the last few videos. So I'm just going to create a new document. Let me double check, make sure I got the right image. Yep, this is a 1K texture. I'm going to do File New. A texture set to RGB and 16 bit. This is going to be a normal map. Okay. So, like I said before, this entire process is based off of just one photo ref. That's it. Nothing else fancy. This this is all of it. So, go ahead and group this. Normal. Create a duplicate it. J and loss and go. Okay. So first things first. Uh, in the previous videos, you probably saw I'm going to use the uh, the Nvidia normal map filter that you can get. It's free. If you uh, just do a Google search for it, you'll find it, or AltaVista search, Yahoo search, whatever floats your boat, and uh, you could load that into Photoshop. But it does work off of grayscale values. So 50% gray is completely flat. It's neutral. Anything that's black will be recessed into the surface. and Anything white will protrude from the surface. So I'm going to do a new layer. And in this case, how do I know I need is 128, 128, 255. 
that is a flat normal matte purple. So that is neutral, which means the surface is neither protruding nor is it recessed. So this is this is where we're going to start. So I'm going to put that down below and duplicate this so I don't lose my original light. I'm going to run a high pass filter. What I'm looking for here is if I crank this all the way up. Okay, so let's say it's really, really low. You can see that we, the, the white areas, which are going to protrude from the surface, are very subtle, and the black areas are subtle as well. As I increase this, I start to get a little bit more surface back. Now, this is, this is kind of a, a trick using the high-pass filter. Um, there, there's other reasons why this is happening. But uh, anyway, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up to a value where I'm starting to get a lot of those, those bumps back. So I'm going to use this again. We can see the coloration in it. So rather than doing a hue saturation, I'm just going to do. Uh, I'm sorry. Instead of just doing adjustment layer, I'm just going to do image adjustments, hue saturation. So destructive process. So now I'm just I've lost all that color. It's totally fine. I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I've got to copy the original, and I'm going to run the Nvidia Normal Matte filter over it. Same settings I've used before, before sample, invert Y, average RGB, alpha field set to one to zero. In this case, on my scale, I'm going to do five, so I've got enough detail. Go. Now, uh, the reason why I created this is, uh, I showed in other videos, uh, why I created this, this default purple, is so I don't have to keep constantly going back and forth and changing my scale in the NVIDIA normal matte filter. Say for instance, this was way too high, way too much detail. The easiest thing I can do is I can just decrease the opacity and it starts to pull it back to, again, again the base purple. So um, for this, for right now, I'm just gonna keep it like this. I'm gonna quickly add just an alpha channel because I need that for my gloss. I'm gonna save this out as, Born plastic PBR2 critical part here underscore DD and reason for that is that will then populate in the export a normal map with gloss and alpha high quality. That is what you need to be using when you do a DDNA extra map. Go back in again. I've removed my diffuse and specular, uh, not the actual maps, but just the the color values over here. And I've bumped up my glossiness all the way up so I can see the, the full. Go ahead and add my. Okay. See. Here we go. This. Little difficult to see, but. There we go. That's a little bit better. So now we can see what's happening with the surface, just the normal map. Thinking. I'm thinking the surface direction is reverse, but double check. Okay, so I, I do believe that this one is flipped. So this one is inside out. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to delete that layer we just did. I'm going to duplicate this one again, add the original, run the normal map filter again, but in this time I'm going to uncheck in. That looks save this out. Should notice a difference. Okay, there we go. So now now the surface direction is exactly where I want it to be. So I want I want those details inside of the paint to be pushed in as if they've been chipped away from from the surface. Okay. So I'm going to bring back my views and my back that okay. Now is the fun part. Bring back the gloss value. Like I said, this is completely using the exact same texture just 
one single reference texture, nothing else, nothing fancy. Um, okay, so same texture. I'm going to reduce the hue saturation. And what I'm looking for is I want these areas where the plastic's been chipped. I want it to be less glossy. So using this scale, um, I probably want my plastic no more than maybe about 40% gray. And I want the rough parts probably around in this 20%. So 20% on the low end, 40% on the high. End. Same process, I'm going to create a new layer. My marquee selection tool. I'm going to, we're going to zero this out. I'm going to use 40% for my high value. Fill that area. Move this door. For my low values, I'm 5%. That's what I'm shooting for. It's close, but definitely needs to be. Quick level adjustments. Really want that black to really be darker than the others, just so I can get that nice surface contrast on. But let's let's try that for now. It's close. Probably give us a little bit more contrast then. So. I'm going to select all, control A, go from select, select all, control shift C, which is going to be our edit, copy merged. Alpha channel, I'm going to paste that back, hide my gloss map. So I've got my normal and save this out. Yeah. Again, my gloss map is going to be in my alpha, and my normal map is going to be just the rest of the channels. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Oh, that's pixelated, then. But you can see that we're we're getting the we're kind of getting the the surface divots and the pop. Um, our plastic areas are looking a little bit shinier. Thinking almost that. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I I, I do like that. So it looks good. Um, I'd like to, add, I, I want to put just a couple little bit more tweaks on it just to help that plastic sell a little bit more. Again, with the uh, subsurface scattering that would occur with it, um, I'm going to fake it a little bit with the textures and uh, help pop out a little bit more of that yellow. So there's a couple ways I could do it. I could come into my spec map, a little bit of color to it, but as you can see, it's, it's, applying over the entire surface. So instead, I'm going to bump up the hue and saturation in both my diffuse and specular map. So and this map back up. So in my diffuse spec layer, I'm going to add another hue saturation. Bump this up considerably. So let me let me just kind of clarify too what's what's happening here. So my levels adjustment ensures that it doesn't blow out like we had seen at the beginning. So this is now falling correctly in line with the reference sheet value. Adding the hue saturation is just boosting color. So it's bringing a little bit more details, but again, the luminosity of the texture map is correct with PBR value. So just make sure you guys understand. Save this out as if. And see what happens here real quick. There we go. So you can kind of see in these areas, we're getting a little bit more color back. Looks good from the, uh, I, I guess it's, it's from, you can see that when the, when the sun's, Reflecting off of it, we're seeing the coloration of the light uh, when they're when it's indirect. That's what the diffuse is doing. So if I take the spec map completely out, you'll see that it's still the same thing. So I fixed the base color. 
And now what I want to do is I, I want to I want to make this highlight a little bit more orange. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to jump back, open up my spec map, my hue saturation. I'm going to push this even more. Um, that actually may be close. Let's see. That looks. So again, levels are adjusted correctly to the reference sheet, and I'm just adjusting the uh, the hue set. Yeah, there we go. That's that's a lot better. You can kind of see it on the um, kind of the fringes of the light. You can see it actually a little bit more, a little bit more orange. Um, so. Probably afford to reduce our diffuse just a little bit more. I probably oversaturated a little bit too much, um, but you can see now that that's that's looking a lot better um, as far as it goes with kind of a, a, a plastic -y tip. I'm gonna change the light of day just to So I think I think that's actually uh, I'm pretty happy with that I could I could make a couple more tweaks, but I, I hopefully you guys at least see the process right now um, of how it all works in it. And so uh, again, hope this helps you guys out. I know PBR can be a pain in the ass, but uh, hopefully this helps you uh, helps you get to the results you want faster. So again, thanks for watching. Bye guys.